and welcome to The Truth in His Art. I am your host, Rob Lee, and today I have the privilege of speaking with artist Amber Robles Gordon. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. And um, I want to start off, I want to get dipped for those who are uninitiated, undipped, unfamiliar. Can you please introduce yourself and give you give us, uh, you know, why you got started in art, how you got started in art, and maybe that that first art making experience. Sure. So my name is Amber Robles Gordon. It's actually Robles, but most people can't pronounce it that way. But um, I am a mixed media installation sculptress. What else? Um, you know, anything from collage to public artwork to site specific installations and to textile uh, sculptures. Um, and, you know, I, it feels funny saying this, like for the umpty of time, but I've, you know, I've known I wanted to be an artist since I was eight, basically. Um, it's always been either that or, or I wanted to be a, a singer because I, I had a voice at one point. Um, but so my first art making experiences were absolutely with my mother and, um, you know, she, I always talk about how she used to have us, uh, we had a creative closet in our home. Yeah. It was like, you know, you know, the hallway closet, then it's one of the larger ones where it's supposed to be probably like a linen closet, you know, like the long, the long, more in-depth ones. Yeah. And ours was filled with, with, uh, creative supplies and games. And, um, and I don't know, where, come to think, I don't know where the hell she got that idea from, because I am so sure that my grandmother did not have a creative closet at, at, in my mom's home, you know? <laughs> right. At least, you know what? Child, I'm going to have to research that. I have to figure that out, because I don't want to be hating on my grandmother for no reason. That's deep. <laughs> I like I like that you, like, arrived and, like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, well, because my, my grandmother, my, my grandmother's creative in other ways, you know, but she she is um, what I would call her like a plantress. She loves plants. And um, she eventually I'm going to write about my grandmother. I'm going to create children's books about my grandmother because my grandmother um, and I'm, I'm going way off base, but just ride with me. <laughs> I, I, like I said, this is your time. This is your time. <laughs> my grandmother worked for FEMA in the latter part of her life. And so um, she would literally, you know, up and leave. And then she would come back. And of course she'd have stories and experiences, but she'd also have plants. Yeah. So my, my grandmother like traveled with plants and she's taught me how to do that, you know, like with the cuttings and everything like that. And, um, and how you package them and wet towels and then, all, you know, not towels, but, but paper towels. And, yeah. um, and so around her home in St. Thomas, she has plants from all over the world. So um, I, she's anyway, she's a treasure. But my first making, creative making experience was absolutely because of my mother. And I, I credit my mother for allowing me to have, um, for, you know, to, for the, the authentic self that she allowed me to still remain and still, you know, set boundaries for me and, and teach me, and, you know, because I'm sure I was, a, a, you know, a grand tour. <laughs> even at that age. I like the way you describe that, by the way. <laughs> grand tour. I'm going to start using that in future. Like, I'm going to ask my mom, was I grand tour when I was younger? Yes, 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 yes. Some of us absolutely were and are, you know? And if you think about it, it really takes a certain type of love and, 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 um, and parenting to be able to raise children that have still have that much of, of their self identity and their authentic selves remaining, you know, because part of our society is about challenging, you know, dissecting and, and redirecting some of that energy. Absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah. And as, as a person that has had these conversations with artists um, over as many conversations I've, I've had, it's, it rubs off and kind of reminding me and informing me. It's like, are you really you? And I try to insert more of who I am and what interests me outside of purely having a quizzical and interesting nature in people's art, which is why we're talking right now and I'm so excited right. about this. Right. But also being able to interject some of my like, yo, I heard that you like this movie. And then ask your weird question about it because I got <laughs> rapid fire questions for you. You don't know about those yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna get through these and we'll get okay. to those. That's the ones I'm always interested in. Like, yeah, so tell me about this. Mafungo or no? Like, what? 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I, I want to talk about this a little bit. Um, so uh, what process materials techniques do you use to create your work? And this is I'm like, obviously I read it, but I want to like have the people who are, who are new listeners, potentially new followers to learn about this. And with that, is there a connection between your, your message that's, that's within your work and how you make your art? Yeah, I absolutely th believe that they, they coincide there. It's a parallel conversation that I'm having, you know, between the narrative and the, the medium, you know, the, the, whatever it is, the uh, actual aesthetic that I'm using in, in relationship to, to convey um, a subject matter. Um, and for me, it's very, very um, important that they, that they coincide with each other. Sure. Um, so for example, and that's one of the reasons why I, I work in a various amount of uh, mediums, like it, it really depends on what the hell I'm trying to convey. Um, and that helps me choose like whether I'm, I'm talking through a, uh, speaking through a collage or speaking through a, 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 uh, a sculpture textile or, you know, or found objects or um, something, you know, totally different, um, you know, or it's uh, working with talking sticks and, and weaving them. Um, and I, I believe that materiality um, is an extension of um, or can be an extension of what you're what you're trying to convey, yeah. and I, I actually think that some people miss the mark sometimes in what they produce because of the materials they actually choose. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay, because yeah, I've I've seen um, a few different things where people are working with mixed media, they're working with fam found objects, textiles, and I'm like, okay this is what I'm seeing here, but then, and sometimes I'm not able to do what I'm doing now and have a conversation with the with artist them, yeah. about, about the work. It's like, so why this versus this to convey this? And that that would be an, info, an informational and very like really cool conversation to have with someone to, I have a few people in mind and I think what you said there a moment of like, maybe some of the, the choices you can miss the mark. So yeah. that kind of gave me a, I, gave me a few oh, more questions. Bit gave me a few more questions. Thanks. I'm, I'm going to reference you, by the way. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the other thing is that I, I also believe that, you know, um, I don't believe that anything is pure anymore. Mm. And I even question whether that ever was. Just like the word, we had this conversation. I'm, I'm in a home with, with, a, with a curator and, and right now, and another artist, and we had a really good conversation last night about the word perfect. Like, why does it exist? Hmm. Um, and, and who is it for? And, and why do we still hold it over each other and hold it over ourselves? And so, and, and you know, part of that, 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 and what you were just saying is like, why, why do we use but there's nothing that is pure. And so when, when I'm looking at artwork and I'm looking at even creating it myself, um, I, I tend to be more drawn to uh, things that incorporate actual um, aspects, materials, and, and, and narratives about our environment. And I don't know how to explain this, but mixing them. Like, for example, pure painting, I, it, it, it doesn't rock my boat anymore. Um, and I question, you know... Lord, I'm getting way into my own, my own personal, yeah, but I, I just think that more of our world is about mixes, matches, combinations. Even if you look at our, like I'm, I'm, my view right now, I'm looking at this ranging, ranges of plants that are just uh, bellowing in the, in the, the, the wind. Um, and I, I, I think that art should reflect life. And there's no aspect of our life that is pure, pure this and pure that. And so for me, that, that hybridism that you're going to ask me about in the next couple of questions <laughs> and or, you know, mixed media, to me, um, it's more of a reflection of, of my actual environment, my actual reality and, and even actual cellular makeup. Um, uh, even when it comes to how we, you know, we... Uh, what is the, the cycle of how we get rid of ourselves and build them back up and, and, and through like cell, cellular uh, regeneration and all of that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. No, thank, thank you. I, I, I think you're right. Just, and again, you know, already through the first few minutes of this conversation, I feel like I'm gonna have a lot to chew on afterwards. So thank you for that. Cause I think, um, 
Yeah, like uh, you've already answered the next question, so thank you for for reading ahead. <laughs> How dare you? Um, a hybridism question, correct? Yeah, 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 that yeah. Word? Yeah, that's the next one. Yeah. So uh, how, how would you share that definition with us? I think you touched on it. But yeah, what what is that definition? But I like the point that you made about that purity, that purity thing. Like, it's, it's not really a thing we 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 strive for this. Sometimes it's overly sanitized this this idea of perfection. And it's like, that's not it's not a thing. It's not real. It's like, no. there's always something else you can do. Oh. There's always a different thing. And you lose that yeah. authenticity when you over sanitize or aim for that perfection. And I think it's a derivative of, of colonialism. It's a derivative of white supremacism. It's a derivative of the, the mindset that 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 takes um, that is allowed for generations of people to to stay um, to stay in a structure that is, and, and environments and mindsets that are uh, that were not mm -hmm. meant for them. Yeah, it's just, it's a derivative of it. So in my in my uh, in my interpretation, so hybridism for me um, is a way that I was able to I guess have come to terms with my my identity because you know I. I was born in Puerto Rico, raised in Arlington, Virginia. And Arlington, Virginia was fucking hard yeah. on a black girl's soul. Um, and a black Latina girl's soul. Um, and so, you know, and then don't even throw in like gender when it comes to like like uh, purity and you start to, to, to grow into your body and, and your environment around you. It's like, well, it was a mess. It was hard as hell. Yeah. Um, and then you as I continue to grow, I push against you know some of the norms about how women are supposed to act, and um, and then about what you want for yourself in relationship to careers. Like I I know I want to be an artist, and it doesn't matter what you say, you know I'm going to figure out how to make these things happen. Right. Um, and um, then I, there was a little there's a little bit of advocacy voice in me even early on, and I remember getting in trouble you know for for things that I did not cause, and then also for standing up for people. Um, and for myself. Uh, so all of these things that equate to aspects of who I am and my character when it comes to being an Afro-Latina, being um, uh, in addition to in this society having brown skin and people considering that to be under the, the auspice of uh, being Af either African-American or Black. And so that also was part of my identity. Um, and then being, you know, a woman. Um, all, all of those things have, have, uh, <laughs> like the, just think of the metaphysical Jenga that is my, <laughs> my, um, my DNA and my character, you know? Um, so, uh, hybridism was one of the ways in which, you know, I can, um, I was able to rationalize to myself, uh, through my art through my narrative, through my voice, yeah. so. I'm stealing that metaphysical Jenga, I'm stealing it. I'm stealing it. Uh, so, you know, I'm gonna skip ahead because, you know, you're, you're, you're hitting everything. You, okay. like, it's, it's like, you already know that, you already know the answer. It's like, you already had the questions. Uh, <laughs> so, so. And Although I, I didn't read all the questions, just so you know. <laughs> nor should you, um, but, but I, cause I think that leads to a more, um, like real response and real conversation mm. versus let me hit this bullet point and we're done 10 minutes. Mm. Um, so, so tell me about being an innovator and challenging norms. And I, and I think that would be a nice point to come off of as to what we were kind of just discussing there, but why is it important for your art, but also art at large to challenge those norms and to try to be innovative? Um, I have found that it, it's just been necessary for me. Um, I, I, I don't know that it was, um, especially in this industry, uh, if you think about the paths, the people that have walked the paths prior, um, when it comes to professional artists, it's such a male, white male dominated industry. And um, then, and then um, you know, underscore every other man on, underneath that. And then, somewhere along that is, is women. And then you go by, by race, which is unfortunate as well, but um, to line up in order the women as well. Um, and some of that you honestly do have to kick out of your brain in order to, to, 
to pursue this career. There's a, there's a certain amount of crazy, I believe, that an artist has to have um, in order to, to <laughs> potentially exist and, and function and create a business and entrepreneurship as an as a, um, artist. Um, okay, repeat your question, because between the, the beautiful plants outside and the birds and then uh, me trying to... Tell, tell me about um, being an innovator and challenging norms and mm. why is that important within art specifically, yours or art, is, art at large? I don't know of any other way to come, come to this, come to the point that I'm in my life right now. Yeah. Um, I don't think that I would have been able to do to get where I am right now in 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 my personhood and my career if I had not had um, the will to challenge, yeah. and if I didn't have the um, the innate <laughs> innate knowledge that I deserve what it is that I deemed uh, for myself. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and I say that because. I don't think that everybody has that. And not that I'm, I'm putting myself somewhere else versus person here. That's not, I'm saying that it, it's, it's, so, um, it's so utterly important. And I believe that we all have it in some ways, you know, because I also believe that it's an innate, innate um, gift. Yeah. And, but I do think it's in other areas versus like uh, someone else, it's about science. You know, someone else, it's about writing. Um, but I also know that it's, it's, a, it's a muscle you have to you have to work at it um in various aspects of your existence you know um depending on where you are in your cycle of life it Absolutely. is it's a muscle it's necessary but i but i will say it not everybody has not everybody has that in that way not everybody has it's a weird thing not everybody is going to challenge the um the norm it's and i wonder if we're supposed to i, I don't know that's that's a question that i uh, i ask myself in debates that i have with myself about how people how people show up in the world you know what what would happen to our society if more of us broke norms i, I don't even think that the world is ready for that conversation in fact the structures that are in place it, it tells me that they're not ready for that conversation. Well, in many ways, that's that's what the movie The Matrix is about, right? Like, are you going to pull out of of that and right. think your 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 notion? And I agree with it that it is a muscle. It is you you have to like put that out. So, and I got to a, a spot where I needed to advocate for myself, and I find myself advocating more for myself. It's like, oh, don't tread water, just work hard. And it's like, no, 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 disrespectfully um, or respectfully, I want what's mine, and I want that now. And and knowing what I bring to it and really having that faith in, in, is something that it felt freeing to, yeah. to, to say that versus making myself smaller for somebody else. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm a black man or what have you, and I have whatever my set is, but I think when you have more things that are around, you have to be that much more innovative. You have, that, you have to challenge that many more norms. And it's like, no, I'm doing this. What you gonna say about it? What you gonna do about it? Nothing? All right, cool. I'm gonna keep doing it. Uh, so this is the advocacy question, I, and I remember you touching on it a little bit earlier. I read you've been, you've been um, an advocate for for Washington D.C. area arts that that community, the arts community. Uh, could you share a few things that folks might not know about the community? Um, because you know, for some places, they don't, they don't have art there. What you know, you were here yeah. all the time. Yeah, that, that's that's just craziness right there. Um, well. I, I, I always believe that because I live in Southeast Washington, D.C., and it, it, is, it is wonderful to, to be able to have seen its, its growth and its transition in so many ways, specifically in the art world. Um, what I've liked to have seen that, that more of the people that are able to create that growth or able to, to initiate some of that growth in relationship to funding and, you know, to be more of people of color. Absolutely. God damn it. Excuse me, G-O-D. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I am still grateful that the people that have contributed and made some of those, those foundations and, and those things are still thriving. Um, and I just, I, I know of projects that are, that are being spearheaded and, and they're, they're working to, to, um, to continue to make change by people of color. And I just, I, I'm prayerful, you know, <laughs> that, that that they will manifest. Um, but there is so much that 
that little part of the city to some extent um, when it comes to artists, when it comes to people that are creatives uh, that, are, that are happening. Um, I just recently saw a, um, a documentary about the RI, it's called the RI, RIP something. You ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. You should actually reach out to that dude. Um, he's he, um, is a photographer that uh, does one of those um, t-shirt shops. Mm -hmm. And you know, the rest in peace t-shirts that people have for their, um, after a, a family member dies. Yeah. And so what's happened is that, you know, I think what happened for him, this photographer is that he realized that um, at the end of the day, how much of his, uh, his income was coming from, from kids and young people, young people of color dying. Um, and then coming in uh, and 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 want, requesting the T-shirts so that they can wear to the to the the memorials, the services, and just wear in 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 an um, memoriam of their their fallen family members and friends. Um, but even uh, like I didn't realize that it, they've even figured out a a uh, a funding system. So, for example, if I'm not mistaken, so the sales of the shirt portion goes back when it's when it's specifically an RIP shirt portion goes back to the photographer for his service but also it's they're used to fundraise to be able to build up the funds to bury the person who's killed um and I thought that was so <laughs> it was it's was, it was phenomenal and I also equate that to like the some of the progression um the recent um things that um Kaepernick has done in relationship to having a fund for um, for people to have a second opinion when it comes to a coroner report. And I'm thinking it, it, it builders me how we, people of color in, in this society, in this world, have to have these dual systems alongside the frigging government and, and or things that are in place that everybody should have access to, equal access and, 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 and you know, the right type of access, you know, not jaded with race and bias and things like that. Um, Anyway, I so went off. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and these are things that are like are, are baked in. And I, I I'm I'm riding the same wave. I'm I'm there with you. Um and as you look at it, you're like, we we have to almost save ourselves. We have to be able to fulfill and work within our communities and come up with ways to know about these systems that have these biases baked in. Yeah. And, and and that's what we have to do. We have to bake this. I was literally having this conversation with a curator yesterday about you know, how can we find funding? How can we do X, Y, and Z to help? And one of the ideas that I threw out, I was like, I know what my minimum is. I'll ask for this. And then I'm on the a Zemiro that joint. Like, yo, photographers, you need some like, yo, what's your cash app? I'm gonna send you some money, you know, to help mm -hmm. you out. Cause everything has gone up. Inflation has definitely affected artists. And if I can yeah. be in this spot that I'm in having this platform, it's like, it would be on me. At least I take it as in, in a service sort of way. How can I help? How can I use what I'm doing to help? And someone mentioned to me recently, it's like, yo, I haven't known too many people who are in the arts world actually have like a salary because I have a day job as a data analyst. I was like, don't don't make fun of me, <laughs> personally. But also, it's it's about really helping and trying to foster and keep these things alive, especially with people that look like you and I. Mm -hmm. It's important. It absolutely is. Um, hmm. So, I got. One more major, well, two more questions and then these rapid fire questions where all of the goodwill that I've established with you, I'm going to piss it all away. Just so you know, just like, you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that Rob guy. Uh, all right. So what has your, your career taught you about the importance of like professional benchmarks, like kind of moving towards like certain things, whether it be, I need to get better at this as a, as a professional, where do I want to go? What keeps you interested? Things of that nature. What is, what has your career taught you about professional benchmarks? Hmm. Um, so what that triggers me to remember is, you know, by, by 16, I don't know if you, this is probably going to age the hell, like just really tell you how old I am. But when I was 16, I think my mother, I think it was 16. My mother gave me a Franklin Covey. I don't know how old you are. Come to think of it. Um, you remember Franklin Covey? Yeah. Seven habits of highly effective people that kind of Franklin Covey. Yeah, it's like, a, um, it was like a, a system, an organizing system, like an agenda, yeah. right? And it was a whole, anyway. And so I had been keeping a, an agenda since, you know, um, since I was 16. And then I would have like five-year, 10-year, 20-year plan, that type of thing. Yeah. 
now it's funny because I, I will say that like, for example, a good portion of those things have already, of course, have already completed. Um, and the only thing is, is that it's kind of like exercising. In fact, it is like exercising. It, when life happens, then you have to figure out how to get back on track. Um, like for example, in, in that analogy, if, if you're, you break your ankle, sprain your ankle or whatever, you then have to figure out how do you, you know, you adjust your eating habits, you adjust your either workout, your top of your body with weights or whatever it is, um, to address, to continue to address your health. Cause it's, it's, for me, it's not necessarily about the, 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 the number on this scale, it's about the cells that you are and, and your, um, what do you call those? The hormones that you're creating as you are doing this, because it, it's, it's a conversation that you're having with yourself. It stimulates a conversation that you're having with yourself cellularly, uh, your actual body, and then your actual, your head, your thoughts. And that ongoing, um, that ongoing using and toning of your muscles, your thoughts, your ideas is imperative. Just the same type of work that you would want to do in relationship to, to using the muscle of, of writing or using the muscle of drawing and or creating, um, your, your body needs that as well. Okay, so I hate when I do that when I go way off and then I'm like, okay, bring me back in. Well, what the hell is I supposed to be talking about? <laughs> So, but but I think you, I think you got a lot of it in there where you're, you're talking about like benchmarks or what have you, and it's mm -hmm. it's taught you to check in. It's taught you that you have them and you've like kind of got at least at least that's what I was hearing at least. That it you, was. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Because I mean, like, you know, I went to a business school, I'm, I'm 37, I went to a business school and we had the uh, Stephen and the Franklin Covey. And so I think father and son, and it's like, seven habits of highly effective people planning out things. What are your goals looking like? Yeah. And, you know, as I've done this, this podcast, and I'm in season six of this podcast, I'm like, nice. all right, yeah. what am, thank you. And I'm like, what am I doing to add more value? What am I doing to really with this? you know, as you kind of touched on when we began, you may have answered that question many times before, but mm -hmm. there's going to be something that you've had to think about in a different way or in previous interviews, people have listened to you. It's like, I didn't know that about Amber. So mm -hmm. now it's a new detail. And that's what I've tried to add in there. Let's get to a, a lower level. That's to yourself. Each time you say that, you are reaffirming, you're reconnecting to that energy, that cellular muscle, cellular memory um, in, your, in your brain, at least for me. Yeah. Like even when people have already said my name, when they introduce me, I absolutely say my name again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I like to call myself Wave Daddy just so people know what what's up. And you know, it, it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm the Aquarius side, Wave Daddy. It, it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I'll just say that. Um, so with that, that other question is already done. You already answered it. So, <laughs> so you know what time it is. It's, it's time to hit these rapid fire ones. All right. Uh, let's see what you got. No, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna crush this. You're gonna crush this. I assure you. Um, uh, name one of your favorite books. Ooh. You, you're very well read. I'm hearing, and you you have the. I'm, I'm looking at the aesthetic too. Well read, well glasses. The I mean, I mean the, the earrings. The the whole setup is great. Oh, thank you. But, See, look my arrangements, my adornment I'm, for the day. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan. I was just like, hold up. So, what, what's one of the What's one of your favorite books? What, what comes to mind for you? Man. That means there's a list. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. So I don't know that I have a favorite book. I have favorite, like, like what comes to mind is Octavia Butler. I love Octavia Butler hmm. um, for various reasons. Um, what else? Mick, what was the last books that we read together with Larry and um, Zoe? Well, the author, the, the woman author, I can't remember her name. Octavia. No, not Octavia, the other one. The one about love, oh, bell, hooks. bell hooks. Okay. Yeah, I love bell hooks. Um, what else? I do a lot of audio books as well. Me too. Lot, the last one I read was um, the last one I listened to was the elephant in the room. No, the elephant in the mind. That was interesting. Um, so I I I, I, tr I try to do a lot of reading, but I don't know that I have favorites in that way. But I I have I absolutely love books that challenge norms well, I, mean, that, that goes back to that <laughs> I wonder why right, <laughs> right. I, I books okay. that um that make you think um twice about your environment about your life and about the way that you perceive yourself and others thank and, you yeah, yeah. 
That's uh, my answer. No, I, I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I've been on that, that deep dive, that Robert Greene deep dive to how to, as I get into more spaces and meet different types of people and different personalities, it's like, all right, how can I navigate through these better and stay afloat? And it's just like, you just listen to them over and over again. I'll be in the gym doing something, working out or what have you. And then I like key in on something. I was like, all right, that's giving me something for a question. That's giving me something for a thought that I can lead to a different yeah. question. And sometimes yeah. they pop up in these interviews and they're like, damn, I didn't know what, huh? Say that, run that by me again. Where did that come from? from? Yeah, 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 exactly. So I just, I just thought about the Lama Um, and I say that with a with a, a Spanish accent, but that's not how you pronounce his name. That was great, um, though. That was great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, of spirit. Uh, what was it? Of spirit and what and the water. I think it's the title. And then, um, how to hide an empire. That was a good book as well, by um Daniel Im Imavar. So I got I got three more for you. Mm -hmm. What is the last song that you've listened to? Because obviously you're you're hanging out, you're in a much better place than I am. So I feel like great tunes have been played recently. So uh, what's mm -hmm. what's something that you've played? Yeah, with? she's like we were jamming in the car. Yes, we were. What was the song that I had not, I hadn't heard of last last night? That um, uh, 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 Araya Star. Oh, um, Bloody Samaritan. Bloody Samaritan. Bloody Samaritan. I had never heard of that song before. You I love gonna, it. You know, I'm going to add this to the list of things. I'm you gonna need to. Out. It's, it's yeah. a nice song. Yeah. Um, now, because like, you know, DC is not far from me and I need to kind of get some places to check out. Again, I'm stealing. These are, What these questions are really for is me for to, to steal. This <laughs> Apparently. Is a, this is a food and bev related question. Um, okay. What is your go-to place like DC, what have you? And what do you, what do you order? Mm, you know, I, I still like, um, oh God, El, El Tamarindo and, um, oh, what is the other one? It's right. They have two locations and they're both on, on, um, on Pennsylvania Avenue. Oh, why can't I remember the name? Shit. It's a, I believe it's a Mexican restaurant. It's on, on, um, Pennsylvania Avenue. I cannot remember the name. My apologies. No worries. But I also, I love salad. So I love, um, what's that other place? Come on, give me a salad, salad restaurant name. I don't eat Not Chop. I don't like Chop. What's the other one? Uh, sweet Greens? No. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank really? you. Really? It's Sweet yes. Greens? Nice. <laughs> I just threw a Hail Mary. I was like, it's going to hit something. You got it. Ah, you got it. Exactly. <laughs> it's like Amber's there somewhere. <laughs> Um, this is the last one. And this is always a funny one. Um, describe yourself as an emoji. What what emoji best represents you? And maybe there's none. You hear this? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, mine's is that I red demon know. with the beard. That's what mine's is. It's just oh, like, really? I mean, I'm reddish, and I had I used to have more facial hair. I'm not a demon though. Oh, maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Damn it, you should have sent me that one. That's the one I needed to prep for. <laughs> well, what's your most commonly used emoji? Are you an emoji person? Because that could be a thing. Yeah, so my most commonly used emoji is saying thank you, the the prayer. Like when, when people like, you know, say nice things about my art, you know, and thank well, you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so. Well, see, again, segues. That's all I got. That's all I got for you. So I want to Thank you for being on the podcast. See, that, see, make an emoji out of me. I want to thank you for being on the podcast. And I want to encourage and invite you to tell the fine folks, the listeners, where to check you out, your work, and all that good stuff. And anything that you have coming up, feel free to plug away. Okay. So, yeah, I'm on I'm on Instagram. And it's it's just my name, Amber Robles Gordon. Um, Facebook, my website is amberroblesgordon.com. Um, and... One of my next exhibits is going to be in Tennessee, um, and it will be an iteration of the, the successions traversing U.S. colonialism. It'll be part of an extension of that conversation about my own um, heritage, being of, of Puerto Rican and Caribbean descent, um, and the treatment of, of people of color in, in Puerto Rico and uh, the other U.S. territories, you know, Guam, American Samoa. Um, uh, USVI, which is uh, St. John, St. Croix, and um, St. Thomas, uh, Northern Mariana Islands, uh, I'm missing one, the federal district that is District of Columbia, 
And who am I missing? Guam, American Samoa, um, Northern Mariana Islands. Okay, I think I got everybody. Puerto Rico. Yeah, I got everybody. And that'll be in Tennessee and it'll be at Tinny, Tinny Contemporary in May. So thank next you. up. Thank you. So there you have it, folks. I want to thank again, Amber Robles Gordon for being on the podcast. And I'm Rob Lee saying that there is art in and around your city. Uh, you just got to look for it. <laughs>